If you guys remember not too long ago, the Nintendo PlayStation prototype had went up for auction on Heritage Auctions, the world's largest collectibles auctioneer. The winning bid was $300,000. The buyer did have to pay a little buyer's premium, but the owners of this, they got $300,000. Now, I'm sure they were expecting more than that as they were out there saying they got offers of over a million dollars. Why not just take that and run, right? But $300,000 is still a lot of money. Maybe they were throwing out those other numbers, trying to drum up interest, hoping to get another offer. I don't know. But when you take $300,000 and you split it in half between two people, you pay taxes on it, not a million dollars. Still a lot of money to me anyway, right? Was, they made a profit. I'd be really interested to hear those conversations that they had amongst each other after they seen the $300,000 you know, final bid, right? The final... Uh, uh, going price of the device that would be very interesting but yes this was a very unique piece of history and now heritage auctions they have another unique piece of gaming history up for auction they have the sega pluto zero two console prototype now i do find this interesting i don't find this anywhere near as interesting as the nintendo playstation though because the nintendo playstation was you know it was a turning point in gaming history it, it, it kind of, it was a, a thing that never happened and kind of decided where each company went from there. It, it's a very historical piece of very, you know, there's so much to talk about with it. And with this, the, the Sega Saturn Pluto 2, or just Pluto, it's just not as unique to me. It's very cool. I just don't see it going for anywhere near what that Nintendo went for. It's going to go for some money, I'm sure. More money than I could ever afford but I just, I don't find this as interesting. I find some stories behind it more interesting, but they do have some pictures on here. I'll show you real quick. I'll put links in the description to this stuff so you guys could peep it out afterwards. But here it is. Essentially, um, look at this, man. They should really have cleaned that, uh, that cartridge slot area, right? Two Sega Saturn controller ports there, a uh, little uh, telephone line in the back. And then, oh wait, like, yeah, you could really see, man. They really should wipe that up back there, right? A little, little dirty, a little dirty. But the interesting thing with this is it never happened, but it's a Sega Saturn. It has like the Netlink modem built into it. It has some memory built into it, uh, like a hard drive and whatnot. It's very cool. It's unique. It just never happened. Um, from what I have read, it was supposed to be like a, a more cost-saving console versus the original Saturn. But, you know, everything that this could do, Saturns could already do, you know, with the Netlink adapter and whatnot. Uh, it's just something that was a prototype. Maybe they talked about it and it just never happened. I find it more interesting, the stories behind it, right? So digging into this, I'll put a link to Sega Retro's article on this. I've looked at a few articles. I've seen some conflicting info though, but overall it, it's very similar stuff, right? So the one that's up for auction right now, um, somebody had it and the person is in Japan but this is like a, 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 it plays US games. So I kind of, I find that kind of odd. Like, where did it come from, right? Um, so the public didn't learn about this until seven years ago, April 2013, when they had put it out there. Like, hey, you know, I have this thing. Boom, check it out. Like, you know, hey, I would be showing it off too, right? Um, but I think it, it, it's kind of interesting that that happened. They said that they were a former Sega of America employee now living out in Japan. So however they got it, they got it, right? But I find this other part even more interesting. I've seen a couple different stories concerning it because there was another prototype. There's two of these things out there. So there was a second prototype that surfaced right after this one when a collector discovered that his big Saturn was actually a rare prototype. He didn't know. He didn't know what the hell it was, apparently. I mean, if you saw this thing out in public now, maybe you would know. But like, say so many years ago, you'd be like, Oh, a Sega Saturn. If you weren't familiar, you would just think, oh, it's a Sega Saturn. You wouldn't know it's a, a, a prototype of something strange, right? But I find it odd that the person who bought it didn't know what it was. I, I mean, wouldn't you Google it? Like, Sega Saturn, I wonder how much I could, like, how much this is worth, right? I got this at a flea market. And that's what happened. He found it at a flea market in Stockton, California. They say he got it for $3. I've read another article that said he got it for a dollar. Like, either way, just a few bucks and only a few years back, right? says that he haggled down from $5. Like if you went out to a flea market and you seen this out there, you saw something that looked legit and it was never like seen before type of thing, or like you knew it was rare, wouldn't you be like, oh my God, when they told you, oh, I just want a few bucks for it. You'd be like shit in your pants. 
I know I, I would be like sweating and stuff. I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, what do you want for it? Okay, here you go. Like, I wouldn't be haggling. But you could also, you know, get get so flustered. They'd be like, I want five dollars for oh, I got a 20. Here, just take it. Like all like quick. Like, I got, I gotta, I gotta grab this, right? And then the, the seller might be like, wait a freaking minute. This guy really wants this thing. Let me, let me get on, get on my phone and and Google search it, right? Um, <laughs> you know, that's what I would imagine would happen. So you'd have to be kind of calm and collected, right? So it says that he haggled it down, got it for a few bucks, and then proceeded to sell it at Game Gavel auction. That ended at $7,600 and then at eBay for $15,500, but both sales didn't go through. So I'm really curious, where is this guy? What happened with this console afterwards? If the story ended that he tried selling it at an auction and the sales didn't go through, what happened? I'm really curious on that one. That's where I find this stuff more interesting. This auction is interesting. I'm really curious to see where it goes. I just don't think it's going to go for as much as the Nintendo Sony PlayStation Super Nintendo prototype, but still very curious. Let me know what you guys think this is going to sell for down below in the comments. We got one more story I want to talk about that a lot of people have been sending me messages about, and I saw this on my phone the other night, in like a little Google News section when you scroll to the left on an Android phone, at least on my phone, that's the way it works, and I was falling asleep. I was like, what? And then I fell asleep, and I forgot about it, and then people sent me messages like, so thanks for everybody who sent me this article because I find this very interesting. So there's been a lot of reports that Sony is either considering or they have actually been in talks to purchase SNK's parent company, Leiu Technologies. So we talked about Leiu Technologies a while back in a video when we were digging into the history of SNK, like what happened to them over the years. And way back in 2015, Leiu Technologies wound up purchasing them. And I remember digging into that and Leiu had this, this idea of taking those properties from SNK and kind of forming like almost like what Disney is or Marvel, which same thing nowadays, and creating this universe of these properties where there would be comic books, TV shows, movies, video games, toys, everything, right? Just pimping out these franchises. I haven't really seen too much of that, but I have seen SNK, you know, being out there quite a bit more since Leiu purchased them. We've gotten, you know, Samurai Showdown 2019, uh, you know, the various mini consoles. They've done some nice stuff, and then they've had some missteps, that's for sure. But we definitely started getting more SNK over the past couple years than we were for a while. So that's kind of a good thing, in my opinion, anyway. But, you know, really digging into this, um, they say it's a rumor, but this is also reported on Bloomberg and a bunch of other places that like a source close to Sony had brought this up. And it's interesting because if Sony winds up taking over these guys and there, there, there's other offers out there too, like that could possibly, you know, outbid Sony, but Sony's a pretty big company. So you never know, but somebody else could put in a bid and swoop in and they decide to go with them over Sony. But Sony's like, you know, really big. Could they do good for SNK? I mean, I don't really have an opinion on that. I mean, Things would wind up being Sony exclusive. Maybe games would go to PC. I, I don't know uh, with the way they would do things, but it would definitely be beneficial for Sony anyway, right? So digging into this, there's, there's a lot of articles out there. I'll link to this one, but they all pretty much just talk about the same thing. But most of them talk about Warframe. They don't even talk about SNK. I've been very aware of Warframe over the years. I've never played the game, but I know it is extremely popular extremely popular. A lot of people play this game of the fast paced third person action shooter, loot up, load out and carve your own path through the sprawling origin system. Okay. Looks pretty dope, but I've just never played it. I know people who are really big into this game and Warframe, you know, is owned by Leiu Technologies or that's, you know, the parent company of that game. So there's a lot of different things that Sony would acquire here. Warframe, uh, the upcoming Lord of the Rings MMO. There's just tons of stuff. They talk about here splash damage. Who's responsible for games like Halo Master Chief Collection on PC as well as Gear Tactics. What? Right? They got some Microsoft experience right there. Athlon Games who have published Samurai Showdown for SNK as well as every Leiu game. Kingmaker responsible for free-to-play games for the Chinese market. So they could wind up, you know tapping into that Chinese market quite a bit because you know those free-to-play games, 
They're not really free to play. They're free to start to play, right? But um, those free to play games are pretty huge um, in the Asian markets. I mean, across the world, they're pretty big. But, you know, I know in those Asian markets, they're flooded with, um, you know, free to play games out there. So that's one thing that could be beneficial to them. Uh, Radiance Games, Dev Behind Civilization Online. And I'm sure there's more and more to it. You know, more developers and companies that lay you tech is the parent company over. So <laughs> there's just a lot of stuff here that could be going under Sony's belt that people could either be happy for or disappointed that Sony has a hand in it now. You know, it just depends on how the deal goes down, I would imagine. Sony gets these guys and they say, okay, you just keep doing the thing the way you've been doing it. Or they could just like really, you know, put, you know, put their foot down on things and like shape how these companies work and like, hey, okay, the, the next Samurai Showdown, the next King of Fighters, uh, you know, whatever SNK franchise, the next uh, Metal Slug, PlayStation 5 only. You're not putting not putting it on anything else. You know what I mean? Or they could just like, hey, you know, we just want to profit from this. We don't we don't want to have no hands on with anything. You guys keep producing what you're doing and we'll just take our cut. I don't know. I don't know how all this stuff works, but it's very interesting to to consider the possibility that Sony could wind up owning Samurai Showdown, right? Samurai Showdown, King of Fighters. That's nuts. It's a crazy thought. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Really curious to see what you guys have to say on both of these topics we talked about today. Really thankful for you guys watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. It's going to happen sooner or later. I don't know when, but I'm definitely excited for it to happen. And you guys hitting that like, dropping comments down below helps my channel greatly. It's that YouTube algorithm, man. They like to see that, that, that interaction. So thank you guys, and I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.